Hello from Shane Healy and today I'm talking to Angela Marcus. Now Angela is rather unique. Not too many people have had a hug from the Pope. Angela has. Angela, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's start with why you were in Rome in March to actually meet the Pope and be part of a very important gathering of young people. Yeah, sure. Um, so this year is year of youth to begin with. So um, the focus in the church is really youth and young people. And um, on top of that, every four or so years, the bishops hold a meeting called um, a, seat, a Senate where they gather bishops, an assembly of bishops from all around the world in Rome. And they talk about something that um, is of a concern or a big topic in the church that they want to get pastoral solutions for. So, um, and they gather the bishops and they do a big meeting, but this time it was on youth and young people. And so, um, instead of it being an assembly of just bishops talking about young people and the issues of young people in the world today, um, the Pope actually decided to flip it around a little bit and invite young people to be part of that journey as well. So, have young people actually have a pre synod to prepare for the actual synod, which is happening starting off today. Um, and from there, get that feedback and then talk about it with the bishops um, in October today, yeah. Really interesting. <laughs> so we're recording this interview on Wednesday, October 3. So you'll be seeing it sometime after that on the many varied manners via Melbourne Catholic. But Angela, you got the chance to be there in March almost as part of the planning. Our Archbishop Peter Comonsoli is there at the moment, Bishop Mark Edwards is there, Archbishop Fisher from Sydney, a huge delegation of mm -hmm. bishops and archbishops mm -hmm. are there in Rome as we speak, pulling all this together and meeting and uh, really trying to work through this whole topic of youth and where they sit mm -hmm. in 2018 as part of the church, as part of this year of youth. That's really interesting in itself. Mm -hmm. I want to explore, firstly, what you had to say when you were there in Rome in March. What was your message? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, what were the other messages you were hearing and how has that then connected to what is happening now in this month of October in Rome? So first of all, what did you have to say? Yeah, interesting. So I was invited to represent Australia on this mission and um, to be honest with you, this is an incredible task. Wow. Obviously, you can't cover every everything in, in Australia and so I knew I was entering from a place of, of, of smallness, I called it, um, because of my limited experience. No matter how much experience I may have or how much experience you may have, it's still limited to some yes. extent. So um, I entered it knowing that I couldn't cover everything and just try to hear as many voices as I could because I was carrying the voice of Australia. Um, and so I read the survey that 15 young, young Catholics took part in, um, young Australians took part in, in preparation for the Synod. And I really spoke to many people around, just connected with many people through um, media, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just really tried to hear their voices to, to go and um, begin this journey. So when I was there, I was lucky enough to do a speech in front of the Pope himself. <laughs> but, um, and in that, I, I talked about a few issues and the, the biggest issue for me was um, mental health of oh, Australia and that was the number one issue that came across in the surveys because I feel that it is a big thing that our world is dealing with in the, at the moment and especially young people in the Catholic Church are still feel it's, it affects them as well and where do we really help where do we really come in just go back a little you talked before about a, a big document that you're asked to look at in your big week in Rome mm -hmm. and you talked about three quite specific areas that they wanted you to explore can you just talk us through those yeah sure they were called um, the three components of the document that we produced were called um, recognizing um, interpreting and choosing and choosing, and choosing. okay yeah. and, the th and they're basically based on the three um, levels of discernment and so we were, for me what this interpreted into what it meant for us was really explore where our world is today yes and then who is jesus who is god in our world today how did young people meet meet the Holy Spirit. So is that like today. the interpreting section? Interpreting. Yeah, and the yeah. last part, choosing where do we go from this? Where sure. does the church link with the real world today? And how can we really 
and move forward and hope produce and something that's produce something fruitful. that's and that comes back to what and that comes back to what you were saying about the, the challenge when the challenge you know someone when doesn't greatly you know believe in greatly to try and take them on a journey or a path because because you're committed you're to a Jesus to God a Jesus world, but you know so many people are. Mm. What were the discussions, were the discussions of that topic like? That topic like and were you and finding a lot of other young people of other young were people finding those same challenges those same that you've challenges talked about here? Yeah, about here. I, think yeah. Really I think it's really important that really to be Catholic, Catholic, to call yourself a Catholic in our world today is um is a frightening thing. You can't just be Catholic. You can't just be Catholic. It's a little bit. I go to a university. It's very university, secular, it and very secular. Um, meeting young mm. people. And young people I don't always say the first thing that comes out of my mouth is not always like I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic. Um, so it's really important to 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 be open to experiences. And I think this is what we really got through. This is a message that we sent. Young people want to be authentic. Yes. And we be approached in it an authentic way. When we ask young people to be Catholic today, we're asking them to show Jesus in whatever in whatever way it may be sure. to young people, to other people. So um, you know, Jesus doesn't call us to be to be to be good to only to people who they, they um who know Jesus. Mm. He calls us to be called to good everyone. And to everyone. Mm, sure. So um, it's really confronting when a young person, for a young person, to show Jesus to someone who doesn't really necessarily believe in them themselves. And this is something that we need to, we need to work on as a community right. to really empower young people to to be brave enough to do that. How do you go, Angela? Uh, How do you find that? A very personal question. Yeah, it is a really personal question. And to be honest, um, I think it's a very good question because. I, I, it challenges me every single day. I, I'm not, I, I said this um, to someone, you know, my school motto was goodness is strength. Yes. And I've carried this mission throughout my life because no matter where you go, you, you have to be, you have to let God's light shine through you. Mm. And um, for me, no matter what the instances are, I, I take it as a challenge to really show show my show God through to other people and so I'm always open and I take a small and small steps and just really be true to myself when I don't believe in something I just I tell them honestly why I don't believe in it and I'm not scared to but sometimes you know it's about talking to them and listening to them and letting them letting them listen to you yes it's about that transformation um, to be to let someone transform you as you want to transform them is really important. That's a really interesting mm. comment, that last one. Um, I, I mean, I'll make you feel better. My motto, since you've told me your motto, <laughs> is let your love shine. In other words, God's love, let it be seen in me yeah. in the way I act. Yeah. But it can be confronting. Yeah. It can be confronting when you really feel like you're getting nowhere. And I think you've given us a really good picture of that. But I wouldn't mind picking up also, did you have that discussion with the other young people there in March? And were they confronted as, say, you've said yeah. you have been? I think it really depends on the context of the person. So um, when we were in our language groups, we were still confronted because each person came from their own reality sure. and their own um, spiritual journey. So for someone like um, a young woman from um, India, she, where she really um, clung on to uh, clung on to a community, and she was very brave and very open about being Catholic and um, talking about her beliefs to to others, mm -hmm. it came it came across so natural to yeah. her. Whereas for other people from the Western societies, it was very different. Like um, we had we had. Uh, a young person from I'm just trying to think who who should we talk about um, we had a young person from uh, America for instance yeah. who talked about how you know I, I'm very close to my community but it's still I have to live with this reality it sometimes feels like we live in one world in church and then live in a completely different world when we go a step outside of church. And it shouldn't be that way. We should be carrying it with us everywhere we go. But it's it's confronting and it's it, it it's some it's not easy for everyone to do. So um, that was one of the things that we really um, talked about. How this, how can the church really empower us to go 
beyond. And in our document, actually, we say at some um, point, it's we want the church to meet us in, in the streets. And obviously, this was written in Italian. So it was to meet us in, in the piazza, which is an right. open space yes, where yes. everyone just comes and enjoys and celebrates for whatever reason it may be, may be like just comes together in a community. So it's really important for us to be met in these places that are not only inside church, inside um, places where you know you'll be accepted. And places that are authentic to you. Yes. Which yes. is what you were saying. Yes, exactly. So um, that was one of the biggest messages that we carried on because we we want to be strong. We, we want to be strong and joyful and really courageous in our works. Mm. Um, not only inside the church, but beyond that. So, and where does the church empower us to go beyond that? My last question. I saw a wonderful um, picture, and I also saw it on a video of you being hugged by the Pope when your speech had finished back in March in Rome. Tell us about that moment. Tell us about what was going through your mind, because it all probably happened fairly quickly. It must have been a beautiful, wonderful memory. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, when I did the speech, I was a little bit uh, flustered. So um, when I turned around, um, I didn't know, I didn't even think about what to do next. So, I, but he was there, he was already standing up and he was already ready to hug me and greet me. And I, I loved that, that he was ready to, to love us. Mm. And even in our smallness, even when I didn't know what to do, sure. I was approached by this remarkable figure and who, with the remarkable, remarkable love for his church. Yes. So, like, just going up to him was like all all thoughts were out of my mind. Very, very overwhelmed by everything. And I looked at him, and he hugged me, and he said, "Very brave." And I, I just fell in love, like, with this moment because he. He made me feel loved. <laughs> he made me feel Fantastic. like he made yeah. me feel good that I was there and I that I that I should have been there. You know, this is a very big opportunity, mm. and so many times um, I didn't know I didn't know why I was selected. And um, the advice I was given was be yourself. Sure. Um, by good advice. <laughs> good be advice. yourself. Um, by Malcolm Hart, the director of the yes. Bishops Conference, yes. and also my Archbishop um, Emil Nuna. Um, so. It was for me when I was there hugging him, and he and I was being myself, he, and he loving and being loved for it. It made me feel so empowered. It made me feel so joyful. And this is what I really want to carry back: this this joy that young people should be loved, even in their smallness, wherever they mm. go, they should be loved and approached in the same way that this holy this holy figure to mm. us. Um, is approaching us at the moment so yeah i'm very right. excited well i'm not surprised <laughs> uh we've been talking to angela marcus angela was uh, a representative here from australia at the pre-synod in rome in march and contributed beautifully and of course we're now in the month of october the synod is on and uh, you'll be seeing lots of the information coming via the melbourne catholic social channels angela thank you Thank you so much. No, this is a wonderful opportunity. Very enjoyable. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.